for patients who are thinking about IVF as their, uh, their first IVF treatment, there are many factors to consider. And of course, age is an important predictor. And uh, the, as you know, women, uh, the ovaries are, you know, um, you know, declining in their function as a woman ages. However, every woman is aging uh, at a different speed as far as her ovaries are concerned. So while age is important, there are many other factors that are also very important as predictors. So for example, from our research, we have um, discovered that body mass index is a very important factor. Um, reproductive uh, history, such as whether you have had a pregnancy before, um, whether you, ha you have had a live birth or a miscarriage before, that can also have an impact on your outcome. And also other factors such as uh, smoking and your male partner's age, your male partner's sperm count. Um, and even if people do ICSI, we have found controlling for ICSI, sperm count still has an impact um, on the outcomes. And another factor is, of course, we want to find, you know, we want to pull in the information that you have on your ovarian reserve. And there are various laboratory tests out there that estimate your ovarian reserve. So one is day three FSH. And traditionally, um, day three FSH has had many limitations. And many doctors know that. There's been a lot of research published on that. But we have found that if you put that together with age, body mass index, and all your other very specific health data, that can actually become a very you know, useful predictor. Also, uh, antral follicle count. For um, patients who already have had an antral follicle count, that is an ultrasound measurement of how many small follicles you have at the beginning of the cycle, um, that can also be used. So, and if, you're, if you have already gone through some diagnostic workup and your doctor has told you what your clinical diagnosis is, that can also be a factor and can be used as a predictor. Um, but I think the important thing to know is that all of these factors do not work um, individually. Um, it's very important to put them all together. For example, um, we all know a higher BMI is going to give you a more negative effect on your outcomes in IVF. However, let's say you have a woman with um, a BMI of 28. Okay, so that's a little bit on the high end. But depending on how all her other factors are, that BMI of 28 does not have the same meaning as another woman with BMI of 28. So I think it's important to pull all this information together to get a more kind of holistic view of what your chances, chances of success is.